So now we had a look at the motor ticks of the robot, but what we want to know is where the robot is. So we need to know how the robot ticks translate into a movement of the robot. So we need a motion model. Let's have a look at the robot once again. This is the robot as seen from above, and these are the caterpillar tracks of the robot, which may move at different speeds. So let us just assume for a moment that these were no tracks, but these were just wheels that are placed here and here. And so if we assume that the robot has some center, like here, and some axis will go through here, whereas the left and right motor will turn those wheels at different speeds. So then our motion model is as follows. The robot has a left wheel and the robot has a right wheel. And now if the robot moves and say the right wheel moves a little bit faster than the left wheel, then the robot will make some turn. So it will look like that. And the robot will turn around point. Say this point is here. So in the end the wheel will be here and here. So the movement of the left wheel, this curve segment, will have a length of L and the right wheel has a length of R. And we need to know alpha. That's the angle we want to find out. And we also do have a radius. And we also know the width of the vehicle. So that's the width, the distance between the two wheels or tracks of the robot. So having a look at that, we have a situation for the right and for the left wheel. Well, for the right wheel, it looks like that. This is our angle alpha. This is R. And down here, that is R plus the width of the vehicle. So from that, we can set up the equation right equals alpha taken in radians times R plus W, the width. And for the left wheel, we have the situation. It's a little bit shorter here, like that. It's alpha. It's the left, and that's r. So for the left wheel, the equation is left equals alpha times r. So if we subtract that from each other, then we get r minus l equals alpha times the width of the vehicle. And so the unknown r is dropped from those equations. So from that, we obtain that alpha, the angle we're looking for, equals r minus l divided by the width. And now if we put that into this equation here, we also find out that this unknown r, that is l divided by alpha. Now what we can see here is we obtain two equations. The first one is from the movement of the right and left wheel and the known width of the vehicle, we obtain the angle alpha. And having this angle alpha, we can actually put it in here. We know the left length and we know alpha. So we can compute r. So what we know so far is alpha and r. And we also have to note that alpha is not allowed to be zero because then we would have a division by zero. And that makes sense because if r minus l is zero, then the robot would actually go straight and this point here would be in infinity. Now our robot is somewhere in the real world. Let's say this is the left wheel, this is the right wheel, this is the axis. So the robot will move in that direction. And let's say around a point, as we just discussed, say this is the point, the center around which it moves, and we'll move up here. So this will make this curve segment, this will make that curve segment, it will end up here. So this is the moving di direction, that's the heading. And we will say the heading angle, we will use theta to describe the heading angle. Then this vector here will be cosine theta sine theta. And we now construct a vector that is rectangular to this heading direction. And this will be sine minus cosine theta. You have to exchange the two terms. And you have, after exchanging, you have to make a minus. Depending on if you turn that right by 90 degrees, you have to make the minus down here. If you would turn it left, you, you would make the minus up here. So now, where is this point? Say this is the center around which we turn, and say this here is the position of the robot, P. Now, the distance between here and here, we know that, that is R plus half of the width of the robot. So overall, we get the center is at the position here minus the distance times this vector. 
So after we drive up here, where will be this position? Well, we'll find this position by also constructing this vector in that direction and adding r plus the half of the width to here in that direction. This direction is the same as that direction after it has been turned. Now we determined the turn. The turn is alpha. So this direction here is actually the same as that, but now with alpha added. So we obtain the new position of our robot, P prime, which is the center, plus again R plus half of the width times the sine and cosine, but this time of theta plus alpha. And also we get the new heading, which points in that direction up here, and the new heading will be just the old heading plus alpha. And now since we want to keep that within 2 pi, we just do a modulo division 2 pi. Right? And remember in Python that will be modulo 2 times pi. Now let's wrap that up. So we are given the last position and orientation of our robot which is x, y and theta. And we're also given the wheel counts of the left and right wheel. And we also know the width of the vehicle, which is a calibration parameter. And we're looking for the new position. So we first compute our angle, alpha, the turn angle, which is r minus l divided by the width. From that, we can compute the radius, which is l divided by alpha. From that we can compute the center, which is the old position, minus r plus half of the width of the robot times this vector, which uses the old heading. Now we can compute the new heading. The new heading is the old heading plus the turn alpha, modulo 2 pi. And from that we can compute the new position, which is the center, plus again the radius plus half of the width times the sine and minus cosine of the new theta. And this is all for the case if alpha is not zero or equivalently if r is not equal to l. Now the second case if r equals l that's actually much much simpler. So our robot is here it has this heading and if r equals l it just moves straight. So yeah, it ends up here. It is easy to find out the formulas. Our theta prime is just theta because we didn't change our heading. Whereas our x prime, well that's the old x plus the distance we drove. And I'll write l here. Now since l is equal to r, you can also write r times the cosine of theta. And y is the same using the sine. So this is the second set of formulas which we do need when the robot goes straight. There's two more things you need to know. First of all, you know, in the formulas you need the width of the robot. So what is the width? It turns out that's actually not so easy to determine because, as you see here, our robot doesn't have these mathematical wheels that we use to figure out the formulas. Rather, it has these caterpillar tracks. We assume that it's some mathematical wheels like that. What I did is, I took a ruler and measured the distance between the center of the two caterpillar tracks. Using that method I figured out the width is 150 millimeters. So and all our computations will be based on millimeters. So as you remember we plotted the ticks of the motors. But the ticks, that's what the wheel encoders deliver, the ticks is not the millimeters that we drove. So you need a factor. So for every tick that the wheel encoder counts the robot moves a little bit. In my opinion, the factor is 0.349. So I figured this out by letting the robot drive straight and after driving for a certain number of ticks, I measured the distance that it actually drove. So it's 0.349, meaning one tick equals 0.349 millimeters in the real world.